I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. Appreciate you joining with us. And I'm really excited today to introduce to you John Bringhurst. We have so many things in common with our stories. And so I think you'll really enjoy John's journey. It's good to be here, Earl. Yeah, it's good to be here. Are you, uh, are you a native Salt Lake person or where are you from? You know, I was born in Salt Lake. My oh, family, were? yeah, okay. actually, and my family moved to Idaho when I was pretty young. I was yeah. about eight, nine. Yeah. So, uh, had some early on roots here. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, how many have you got? I'm the youngest of six. Oh, okay. So I've always had the youngest mentality. And <laughs> the spoiled one is that the oh, way? Oh, I don't know about that. Yeah, okay. But, uh, yeah, youngest of six. Yeah. All great people. Active in the church were they? Your folks? Yes, my my dad, um, I would say, would be inactive. He, he served in the war, World War II. Okay. Went on a mission, actually, prior to that, hmm. and uh, then was immediately, after he came home, uh, was drafted. Anyway, that's a long story, but yeah. he, he came out inactive oh. and, and was apparently inactive until I was about five, and then we went through the temple. Oh, and okay. I do remember that actually. Oh, you do it at age five, yeah, going have, in and be sealed. I have you? I have a memory of that being in the Salt Lake Temple. And, mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so how about that? And so you were raised LDS and full on, full right? On. You know, although when I was young, we did a lot of camping on the weekends, and yeah. which I'm very grateful for actually. And, yeah. Um, more so when we moved to Idaho, we we were very active, mm. very active. Yeah. Okay, so I guess baptized and baptized at eight. Deacon, teacher, priest. Did and, it all. all you know, served stuff. in the quorums. Se seminary and all that. Did seminary. I graduated seminary. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I think back of my testimony, which may be a question you'll get to. But one of the things that I would always say is, I my first day of seminary, they it was the year of Book of Mormon, mm -hmm. teaching the Book of Mormon, and I recall going home after that very first day of seminary as a ninth grader and taking the Book of Mormon and going on my little motorbike and and hit out uh, on the canal and 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 praying really and and the answer I got was read it was to just read it yeah and uh, but but of course I use that as my testimony you know? sure church is true because yeah. I, was, I was given an answer yeah um, now I know what that answer meant, really meant. Yeah, interesting. As we look back and, and see yeah. things, you end up going on a mission. I did. Went to up to Rick's College um, for a year prior. Yeah. Oh, you and, did? Yep, prior okay. to my mission. It was Actually, Rick's back then, right? It was Rick's now College. It's BYU, yeah. I don't like know. In 82, 83. Yeah. I met Diane uh, actually two months before I left. And she was sort of in, my wife, instrumental yeah. in, in uh, helping me go. Really? And, uh, and yeah. she waited for you She then. waited. She waited Good for, for her. Yeah. One, of, one of the success stories. <laughs> yeah. Very few of those, yeah. I think. But, yeah. well, I don't know. But was she at school then, too? Yep. Yep. Up she there. was up there. <clears throat> BYU, Idaho. Yep. Bricks. Uh, so you went to, where did you go? Arizona, Tempe Mission. Spent time in Mesa and Tucson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Great mission. I, yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. Had a lot of success. You know, baptized several people and yeah. just made some relationships and just really really never doubted you know this is who I am this is what I know this is, yeah and and I guess is really the issue is what did we know yeah looking back I didn't know anything <laughs> I really didn't you know we knew we knew the story right I knew the I knew the narrative that we were taught and uh, and that's, you were supposed that's what to I believe retell that story over yeah. and over the first vision and and all that stuff. 
Great story. Can't yeah. tell you how many times I lugged around that big projector, <laughs> probably fifty pound projector. Yeah. Showing the, the first L- little vision slide show was it, or that was, was a it a movie? It was a Stuart Peterson. Um, oh yeah. First vision movie. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That was that was my testimony. <laughs> so you come home and. Uh, yep. Come home. Um, Diane's waited for you. Five months later, we got married. Really? Wow. Salt Lake Temple. Um, yeah. And she's got kind of a story that she'll probably want to relate about. Yeah, we get to her, meet her, her next. Experience. So. But you know, we we just we were we were full believing. You know, we just did it all. Yeah, did it all. Well, this is amazing. And and children, you had how many kids? Five children. Five. Yep, five okay. kids and. You and everybody just, just doing the Mormon thing, huh? And this sh- was still in Idaho. Or are you still, still up there now? We we actually or, spent two years. We, were, we we originally uh, lived there and then um, spent two years in Kaysville actually working down here and um, then went back to okay. the Twin Falls area. Yeah. Okay, and so this goes on for many many years, right? Yep. Yep. Um, good good Mormon boys and you have we, callings, we, I guess, all kinds we of work callings. Our tails off. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I served in in men's. I served in a, in a bishopric as a counselor. I was yeah. in the high council. You know, Diane. You were on a high council. I was on a high council, and Diane was a relief society president. We we just, you know, we were just. Was there ever any question that came up during all, any of this time, or now that you look back, anything on the high council, or or anything that ever? You know, yes. Since you bring up the high council, that it, experiences on the high council. I mean, I actually thoroughly enjoyed. It. I did a lot of speaking and. But, uh, oh yeah, every month, right? Yeah, every month, <laughs> you know. But there were there were some things there that made me think, you know, is is this really godly? Is this really Christ-like? What we're doing here uh, as a part of a disciplinary council, for example. Yeah. Um, but going back maybe to the to the temple and getting married and yeah. Um, when I when I first actually maybe a little bit back towards my mission, um, I went through the Provo Temple the night before my parents took me to the MTC. Okay. And so, you know, I, I just remember that experience and, and, and looking over at my dad and my mom and, you know, back then it was it was different than it is today. Yeah, before 1990, Before right? 1990, yeah. the, before the changes right. were made and, and, and I just, uh, I just honestly couldn't believe this is what we were doing. <laughs> All this work up to go to the temple, and this is what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. and um, I knew I nothing felt about it prior to that. But yeah, yeah, that that was a little bit eye-opening at the time. But you know, you just you just carry on. This is the way it is, I guess, and we'll figure it all out in the end. And I ask this every once in a while, even about our missions. But did you feel like you were preaching church or preaching Jesus? Did you feel any of? Oh, definitely preaching the restoration of, of the church, of the gospel. Um, that's what the message was. And you wanted, Joseph Smith and and everything since then. That was that was the message. And get people baptized into the church and into the that, church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I sensed that too. Later on, I didn't think about it when I was on my mission. But okay, so busy callings and everything else. So what happens in life? Well, about 2013, 2014 time frame. Um, I, I had a son that that left after serving a mission, get married, and and and, it, and it's possible that it, I honestly can't tell you why I ran into this this uh, video online on YouTube called the five myths and truths why committed Mormons leave the church. This is John Delin's John uh, Delin's video he put okay. together. It's very great. I mean, it's a you know details of of a survey that was yeah. put out and went on. I, I ran into that and watched it a little, and then the fear set in. What am I doing? You know, what am I doing? What What is this? I can't be. You shouldn't what be doing this, this. What is this information that I have never heard of? Um, so so I back off, you know, and yeah. the fear sets in, and I'm, and so it, that starts my mind thinking, you know, and what do I really believe, you know? And and it goes back to as a child, you know, we we're we're asked to bear our testimonies and say, I know the church is true, and you know. <laughs> I didn't know anything about the church when I started saying, I know. And if there's one thing that I know now is that I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. This is so I, right. Uh, uh, 
I know a lot more now than I ever did. As and, a Mormon, yeah. And without a doubt. Yeah. And uh, So did you, did you eventually research these five myths or anything? Yep, I started or? little by little diving into what is this, you know, what is this polyandry? What is what is the Book of Abraham problem? Yeah. Kinderhook plates? What are, what are those? What is that? Yeah, I, I didn't know there was multiple visions of the first vision. Yeah. I knew I knew of the first vision story. I yeah. didn't know of the one these in the other... Pearl Great Price, right? Yeah, and, and the one that Joseph Smith penned isn't even close to what the church teaches. <laughs> right. Uh, so then I would have fear again set in. What am I doing here? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm online looking, trying to research. Oh, I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> I'm supposed to go off the manuals, and here's the questions that you are to ask. Here's right. the answers that you are to get. Right. And uh, that's that's what they want. Do you think the church, um, why do you think we don't know those things? Well, obviously they're negative, but... Uh, <laughs> what we do know is what's faith promoting. And that's been the store, that's been, <clears throat> that's what the church wants us to know is what's faith promoting. There's a lot more. There's a lot more to it. And, yeah, it's and, very shallow knowledge, like you're saying, yeah, just we yeah, don't know much. Yeah. Yep, so, you know, I, I uh, some of the information that's kind of interesting that I started running into was on on fairmormon.com. Oh. And I and when I first started seeing stuff there, I thought I was on an anti-Mormon site. <laughs> this was the, <laughs> Rather than this a, wasn't the church's site, it's, it's the apologetics for the church. And I started learning more problems there than I, uh, along with, you know, other places, but um, the essays came out, you know, and, well, mm -hmm. I discovered the essays. They came out in 2013 and really started studying the church essays right on the church website. Yeah, LDS.org, <coughs> LDS. LDS. <laughs> yeah. And it was then that I realized when discovering this new story about how the Book of Mormon was translated, and with not not his fingers running over the plates, which is the, <laughs> like the flip chart that you use on your mission, right? And, but but it, with a with a seer stone in a hat, and you know it's just a complete different story. Why didn't I know that? Yeah. Why wasn't I if, didn't know it? If that's the truth, why wouldn't that have been the truth from the very beginning? Why wouldn't that have been the story from the very beginning? Very beginning. Yeah. Instead of, well, it may not be faith promoting, so let's. Let's come up with this version, which honestly is what happened. You know, the, I guess the, it is. It, actually, the first vision is the third revision of the first yeah. vision that Joseph Smith penned. Nothing, right? nothing original. No. I mean, it. Uh, no. Yeah, you've uh, you've got an interesting thing here. Did you want to share this a little bit about the Book well, of Abraham? Well, part of part of the essays um, in the Book of Mor in the Book of Abraham essay, there's a quote. And the quote is, uh, as John Whitmer observed, Joseph, Joseph the seer saw these records and by revelation of Jesus Christ could translate these records with a footnote next to that quote, footnote 31. So what is footnote and 31? And this is a gospel essay. This right? is right on the LDS church's LDS website. Okay. Yep. So, so if you look at the footnote, the footnote then uh, has another quote by Warren Parrish out of a letter to the editor, which was to the Painesville Republican in 1838, February 15th. So Warren Parrish writes this letter to these to this Warren, newspaper. That's and, right. And they pull this quote out of that. This is the quote and they pull out and, and as a footnote. As a footnote. Okay. I have set by the side and penned down the translation of the Egyptian hieroglyphics, as he claimed to receive it by direct inspiration of heaven wrote Warren Parrish, Joseph Smith scribe, as a faith-promoting quote. Yeah. The problem is, is you need to look at that document. The entire document. The entire document, which the church references in footnote 31 in the Book of Abraham essay. You know, and if you, and it's very easy to find that exact document. And he goes on to, to qualify himself, this is Warren Parrish, as someone who knew Joseph Smith, he knew he knew his character, yeah. um, and and a part of that qualification was that quote I have set by his side and penned down the translation. But you go on, and he says, you know, I have been astonished to hear him declare that we had sixty thousand dollars in in our vault and six hundred thousand dollars at our command when we had not to exceed six thousand and could could not come in anymore in relation to the bank that, that was started up. 
Um, so there was some deceit back then. A little, uh, but such has been it. the audacity of these boasting blasphemers that they have assumed the authority to curse or to bless, to damn, to save, not only this church, but this entire generation. He goes on to say, For the year past, their lives have been one continued scene of lying, deception, fraud, and that too in the name of God. And this, this is, is in this that is same document. quote from the footnote 31 in the book of Abraham. They didn't they include said, that in the footnote, did they? <laughs> no, they did not. What avails the claim of, of such men to holiness of heart when their examples to do violence uh, to the system of, mora of morality, to say nothing about religion? It goes on and on, but really this is the best part. He finishes the document by saying, but the most astonishing, astonishing thing after all is that men of common sense and common abilities should be so completely blinded as to, the, as to dispense entirely with the evidences of their senses and tamely submit to be led by such men and to countenance their such glaring inconsistencies and at the same time to be made to believe that they had God for their author. Mm -hmm. He goes on to say, you know, their revelation is going to damn themselves. Yeah. So, yeah. I think the, that uh, covering up, right? The deception. Is it? Yeah. This is where now, okay, now we've got a new problem. Trying to, trying to deceive. This is an obvious deception. Pulling out a, a faith-promoting quote out of a document that's very damning to Joseph Smith. Um, I got a problem with so that. So you start dealing with some of these inconsistencies and cover up. That's right. You know, a, a, an obvious one today, you can watch Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration. This, this very well done production that the church has out there. And it finishes up with the scene at Carthage, mm. in Carthage jail, where uh, in the movie you see all the brethren in, in the jail cell locking the door as the men were trying to get in with their canes, <laughs> and then they start shooting through the door. And then, you know, Joseph, Joseph and Hiram are killed, and, yeah. and, and in the movie you see Joseph Smith going up to heaven, essentially. <laughs> the problem is, is here's John Taylor's real, real story out of the History of the Church, Volume 7, Chapter 9, page 102. <laughs> Sometime after dinner, we sent for some wine. It has been reported by some that this was taken a sacrament. It was, not, it was no such thing. Our spirits were generally dull and heavy, and it was sent, for, sent to revive us. <laughs> so in Carthage jail, they're, they're having a little bit of wine. Um, you know, and really, why were they in jail? Why was Joseph in jail? There, there was a lot of reasons. Yeah. It wasn't because he was going like a lamb to the slaughterhouse. It no. was because he was running from the law. Right. Destroyed and the, the, the Nauvoo Expositor. The Nauvoo the, Expositor, the newspaper, which, and... which uh, William Law and Jane Law, his wife, William was a counselor to Joseph. Uh, that's a whole other story. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that was a good guy, that William Law. Anyway, um, uh, the, so Masons, this, the Masons had just... Uh, yeah, the Masonry. He, well, he, he, yeah, he'd been Mason, and then he was getting, having women be, participate in the Masonry stuff. Yep, yep. They didn't it, like that. So. There was polygamy going on, which he never um, admitted to when he was alive. So, and, and so like you say, you know more about Mormonism I, I now than I mean, we could go on and on. You know, and I guess the quote out of the history of the church that anybody can go into and read John Taylor talking about how after they tried to block the door, Joseph pulls right. out a pistol and shoot six times, three bullets, three, three went off, two people were hit, and he says, I was told were killed. So you don't see that in the, in in the, the movie. In, in the probably a multi-million dollar movie production the church has put together, you don't see that. Just show them blocking the door. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is where, you know, when I started studying and realizing not only are there issues that, that are potential problems, but they're trying to cover that up. They're, yeah. they're not telling the full story. Right. They're only saying what's faith promoting and, and people uh, are afraid to discover that. So what kind of t tips the scale for you? At some point you have to say, okay, I guess yep. so, this isn't true. <laughs> okay, so in, in May of 2015, I have a son gonna be getting married okay. the next year in the temple. So I'm going for a temple recommend interview. This is May of 2015. And 
when I go to the stake office, I'm now being interviewed by the bishop that I served as a counselor to, oh. who's now in the stake presidency. Know them very well. And I thought he would probably have an idea about the essays that are on the church's website. And so I asked him. And at the time, really, I was seeking for answers. I was seeking, you know, I didn't want this to happen. Right. I don't want the church not to be true. I, I've got to I prove not, it is true. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so I went there really seeking for help. And I asked him, tell me, you, you have to be bombarded with questions right now because of these essays that are on the church website. And, 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 and I said that because I have had questions ab about these essays. And he didn't know anything about what I was talking about. And I, and I noticed that and just dropped it. Um, was and, that shocking? And, and it was very <laughs> shocking. And then I realized, you know, people don't know this stuff. No, they don't. And, and they don't even know what the church itself is trying to put out there very subtly. Uh, and, and in my opinion, say that they've been talking about it for a long time when they really haven't. The essays are kind of hard to find. You have to dig to get yeah. to them. Yeah. Yeah, they're under gospel topics, I think. Gospel topics, yeah. yeah. yeah don't, you can't even look at <laughs> You have to click several times to get to all of the information. It's okay. kind of tricky. And so, so these yeah. little subtle things, you know, and, and in, in, the, in the essays about polygamy, they, you know, I learned about Joseph having many wives and and uh, which you know you kind of always knew in the back of your head, but I didn't know the details of it. Yeah. Um, you were so teaching a primary class. I was teaching a. What primary. happened with this? Diane and I were teaching a primary class. This is January of last year, and um, <laughs> the lesson, the, the, the subject turned to in January of last year to uh, church history, gospel, okay. uh, the, the the doctrine and covenants in church history, and. In looking at the essay about the translation process and the first vision, multiple first visions, and yet looking at our manual, it there's two different messages being presented. <laughs> and as you know, in the manual itself, you know, you're supposed to hold up the picture to my 10-year-old primary class of Joseph running his finger across the gold plates, and that's not how it happened. And and the church is even coming to admit that. And so, we actually went to the bishop and. And, and, and Diane will tell her story, but um, and said, Bishop, here's our lesson manual. Here's what here's the church the, is saying. Here's the truth. There's two different messages here, and until we figure out what's going on here, we may not be able to teach anymore. <laughs> and uh, what did he say? You know, he said, Well, that's okay. Why don't you just teach about Christ? Really? Oh. So we did. Yeah. We did. We we just left the manual and and taught about Christ. Did you start then? At, what did you think of Jesus as, as even even a year and a half or two years ago? I mean, well, it, just the typical Mormon Jesus, yeah, right? He the, was your the, older brother. And, the Mormon Jesus is my older brother, is the Son of God, who in my mind is is the messenger between us and God. You know, that's really how it's kind of presented. Um, yeah, our advocate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's it's a it's a very different Jesus than the Christian Jesus. Yeah. Being God. Being God. Yeah. Even though John one one says that. Right, which makes more sense to me because you know if uh, if if I'm gonna if, if I'm gonna save the world, I I'm not gonna send my son. I don't think and let him suffer. I, I would do that myself. Yeah. And you know just like if. I want my kids to come home. I don't think it's going to be necessary for them to to pass a test to walk in my door. Of different Give me words. some handshakes. And, and that's you know, at, at looking back, it, it's just obvious. Wow, you know, our time is really speeding by, as you oh, can probably okay. imagine. But there's still several things. Um, it, um, the Bible, I guess, has taken on a little different perspective and. Yep, you and you know, Earl, I, I am learning, and if there's anything that I want, it's truth. That has... That's, that's what I want, is truth. And that's where I'm going. And if the Bible is truth, yeah, I'll get there. But it's I'm learning. Not, it's not an easy journey, it's is it? It's not an easy journey. And when you've been raised as a Mormon, and have that background and that belief in a prophet and, and all this. And we don't understand grace. 
as Mormons. We don't have an appreciation for the cross or the Bible. And we come out, we're kind of thrown out there. And you probably run into other people that have struggled too, right? The whole rug has just been, you know, swept yeah. out from under you. And, and, uh, but that's okay, I want truth. But and you can't I, deny the, what I keep calling the bad news, but the, the things you've learned about polyandry no. and the masonry and temple and, no. and all we, that. We, we, have a, we have a brain, we have intelligence. Let's use it. Yeah. Let's not have the fear that honestly has been instilled in members of the church to, to not look outside of, right. of the box that they want you to, to, to think in. Yeah. And, and, and start thinking, start using your brain and research. The, the church is big on education. Well, get, educate yourselves because yeah. there's, there's a lot get there. Learn. Um, the message of love in the Bible yeah. is, is my message now. That's what I want. God I, I, is love. God is love. Yeah. And so that's what I that's that's what I'm all about. I just want to love people. Yeah. And this is one of the most freeing things that I have experienced in my life. Are we running out don't of time? No, but don't you feel less judgment? Uh, you Absolutely. feel more freedom. Yeah. Do you feel that? Yeah, I do. Yeah. I noticed it um, pretty early on that I that I didn't have to worry about what people believed and, and knew. I want them to know what I knew as a Mormon, right? But I, that, that wasn't important anymore. You can't be afraid to love look. And, yeah. I just want to love people. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, that's, that's awesome. That's good. Well, one thing that really helped me and kind of it, it, with the Bible, things like the Dead Sea Scrolls and the archaeology for the, for the Bible, I mean, those things are factual and right. true. And you know, Mormons have such a disregard for the Bible. If it doesn't quite fit their thing, it's just not translated correctly. Yeah, you can't deny, you know, the fact that uh, there's places in the Bible that uh, that actually exist. Yeah, you, know, you can't you can't necessarily do that with the Book of Mormon. Not at all. You know, so, yeah, there, without a doubt, there's 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 some credibility there. Yeah. For sure. Well, I can tell you're still learning, as I, I am too, we're trying to find our way in this crazy journey, um, and just. I, I wish you the best, and I know it's a challenge, but... Earl, it's been wonderful to, to get to know you and Carla. You helped us tremendously. You, yeah, you said you saw my 17 minutes. 17 minutes and, was, was instrumental. Oh, and praise God. And I appreciate God. your courage well, you know, yours as too. a former bishop yours to too. come out. You know. Well, I mean, we just, we're just so naive almost. We almost feel childish now that we look back and think how we were so naive going through that process for... And you did it for many years. Yeah, it took it took time. My <laughs> wife is much smarter than I, and she she was. Well, we're going to get to hear yeah. her next. I'm excited to hear that and what she must have thought of you. She probably thought you were off your rails, right? <laughs> I, she did. <laughs> hey, we'll see you next time here on the Ex Mormon Files. Thanks.